five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. <coughs> but at midnight there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the groomsmen, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaid came along and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. People wait, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For it is as if a man was going on a journey and summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. And then they went away, and then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me these two talents. I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you did not see. So I was afraid, and I went, and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter. Then you ought to have invested with bankers, and on my return, I would have received that with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For all of those who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness. Where will there be weeping, gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. The reason I wanted to read both parables was this. I was getting ready for our Wednesday time of prayer. I noticed as I was reading through these pages of Scripture, that the parable that comes right after the parable of the bridesmaid is the parable of talents. And I asked the, those who assembled for prayer, well, when do you usually hear this parable of the talents? And they do right away. Well, it's during our stewardship emphasis. Because, and this is why the narrative lectionary, I think, has done us such a great service, 
Because if you lift up these uh, parables and these stories and just consider them uh, by themselves, stewardship is a good ideal. And it's a wonderful stewardship passage, but it has nothing to do with stewardship. And I'll tell you why. I've been doing this for a long time, and I've gotten it wrong all the time. Isn't that something? Now, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is looking at, down at the temple with his disciples. And there's, they were rhapsodizing about how wonderful the temple looked. And then Jesus says, all those stones will eventually be torn down. And the disciples were scratching their heads and wondering what he was talking about. And then they asked him, well, tell us when all of this will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. So at the top of chapter 24, Jesus begins to talk about the end of the age. And there's two things or three things that I think he emphasizes. Number one, it's going to come at an hour that you do not know and at a time that you cannot be sure of. Not even the, the Son, only the Father knows when he will come. Again, no one knows, not the Son, only the Father. So, unless the Father has whispered to one of us, we don't know. We don't know when he will come. And as I told our group gathered for prayer, it could be right after prayer is over. It might be during prayer. It might be the next day. It might be two, three years, a thousand years. Who knows? Right? It comes at an hour we do not know. Second thing that I think is important is Jesus continually says, you have to watch. You have to be ready. Okay? You have to watch. You have to be ready. So that is kind of the interpretive framework that we have going in these chapters. You don't know when it's going to happen. So you have to watch and you have to be ready. Jesus tells a parable about the homeowner who if he knew when the thief would come, would be ready. You don't know. So you have to always be ready. Okay, that's the context. And then somebody slipped in chapter and verse numbers. And so we separated out chapter 25 from chapter 24, thinking it's brand new. And then we separated out these little stories, you know, out of their context. And so the chapter on the talents completely loses the point that Jesus wants to make, and it becomes a nice stewardship story. Okay. <clears throat> Now, that is the interpretive framework. We take a look at these parables. And maybe you see what they mean. Parables of bridesmaids. Now, unsurprisingly, they did weddings a little bit different back in the days. You know, we hear weddings, we think of, well, you get engaged, you send out the invitation, now they send out a save the date. We have a save the date. Right? And you can go on and on and on. Whack in those days of betrothal engagement. But really a, a betrothal is stronger than an engagement. It's a promise that there will be a marriage between not just the bride and groom, but two families. Keep that in mind. Betrothal. So, and, and really betrothal is celebrated as much, it's not more than a wedding. When time for the wedding comes, the groom goes, picks up the bride, takes her home, and they party for however long. And so what you need to have in this scene here is the bridesmaid waiting for the groom to arrive so that he can pick up the bride and off they go to the wedding celebration. So that's the context. Okay, somewhere along the way, they brought their lights, their lamps, okay, and they were expected to use their lamps to lead the bridegroom out. Bridegroom's late. How many of you have been to a wedding where the bridegroom was late? Okay, it happened. 
Bible, doesn't it? Okay, so when the time came and the bridegroom arrived, they had to trim their lamps. I like what I'm doing here. There it is. Now this, not a real thing. Filled with oil, at the wick. And when the oil runs out, what happens to light? It runs out. So if you have something to do with your lamp that's going to take a lot of time, what do you need to bring? Oil. A little extra oil. Okay? Now, in the context of what Jesus is talking about here, after he talked about being ready, about watching, about wakefulness, he says the kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven coming. What we're waiting for is the kingdom of heaven coming. It's like bridesmaids waiting for the bride. They have their lamps. They have their light. Now, earlier in Matthew's Gospel, he says something very important about light that we hear at baptism. Can you think of that line? Let your light so shine before others. Let your light so shine before others. So that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Way back in Matthew chapter 5. In the con and that's in the context of Jesus saying, you are the light of the world. Don't hide your light under a bushel. What do we have that song with it? This little light of mine. What are we going to do? I'm, I'm going to what? I'm going to let it shine. And you, we hold it up like this, don't we? You don't keep your light down here, do you? What do you do? Hold it up. Hold it up. Okay. So, and so we talk about this light at baptism. Why? Because at baptism, the light of Christ comes into our lives. Christ hands us our light. See how that works? Light doesn't belong to us. It comes from Christ who gives us this light so that we can hold it up, Helen. Hold it up. So that people can see it. Now, what do we have to do to keep this light going throughout our life? How do we make sure we have enough oil for this thing so that we always have a light to shine before others so they can see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven? Prayer. What do we have? Read the Bible. What else? Prayer. Pray. Worship. Worship. Do what? Serve. Serving. Doing the things that Christ wants us to do. To do. Right? What about the servants who think, well, my master won't be home for a long time. He's delayed, so I don't have to do I don't have to do that, church. Right? When's Jesus coming? When's the kingdom coming? The kingdom of heaven's like this. Like bridesmaids who have a light. What if Jesus doesn't come at a time that we expect? Born? Tired of waiting? The point of the parable is that, 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 that Christ has given us the light. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to keep it going? How are you going to keep it lit? How are you going to make sure that light is shining when Christ is? Because he's coming when? Okay. So the context of this, this, this parable is the attitude of waiting, watching. We don't know. We're not sure. Christ has given us this light. Let your light so shine before others. Right? So that they can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Don't let it go out. Don't let it go out. Do the things that need to be done to keep your light shining. Okay, now. The other parable. The parable 
pull it down. Well, let's start talking about stewardship. Did Jesus say that? Let's start talking about stewardship. Let's start talking about our stewardship, right? Don't Jesus say that? He says, it is as if a man goes on a journey. So he's continuing with the same thought. Again, think. Watch it. Think. Wakefulness. Think. Being ready. Why? Because do we know when he's coming? No. Now, instead of the light, we think talents. Now, when we think talents, we're thinking about the old gifts and stuff that God has given us, you know, typical stewardship sermon. But talents in, in that day and time was a huge amount of money. More than a regular Palestinian peasant could ever make in a lifetime. A talent. Kings had talents. He gave out five of those things. Two and one. The guy who had just one shouldn't feel bad because that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Think of talents the same as life. God's gift to you. As you begin your life in Christ to death. What are you going to do with those talents? What are you going to do with that precious gift that has been given you at baptism? Work it, use it, or bury it. Did I just talk? Watch. Wakefulness. When's Christ coming? They move is what? Say move is to be ready. When you get bored and lazy, you know, oh, they'll never come. Right? Watch. Wait. What are we going to do with the talent? What are we going to do with that light? What are we going to do with these wonderful gifts that Christ has given us as we wait for his coming? See, the context makes a difference, doesn't it? What we're talking about. The urgency of these perils. Watchfulness, being ready. Coming at a time that you do not know. That's our situation as we stand here on the fourth Sunday in Lent waiting to talk about the crucifixion and the resurrection. And we have these wonderful gifts because of what Christ has done for us. These light and these talents. And in these last days, in these last days, how are we going to use these gifts? Now, today, 